Welcome to another video from Cardboard East. My name's Shay. I play board games from Asia and share it if I with all of you. Welcome to Spiel Week. Now, next week is the world's largest board game convention, Spiel. It happens every year in Essen, Germany. Now, this week, I'm going to do Spiel Week. And that means every day of this week, I'm going to be taking you through all of Spiel from hall to hall to hall. So hall six, hall five, hall four, three, and two. I couldn't find any in hall one. So <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to walk you through hall six, show you all the board games from Asia in hall six, and then we're going to work our way through hall five and four and yada, yada, yada. So without further ado, here we are at hall six. Boom. Now, I apologize if it's a little bit uh, blurry with some of the names. But here we are, we're bursting into Hall 6, walk straight past Cosmos. You don't need to see that. You're here for the board games from Asia. And here we are at 6F300. Now, there are going to be a lot of publishers in this booth, and it happens quite a bit um, at Spiel, because booths are very expensive. Not everyone is asthma day. And you're going to see a publisher called, sorry, we are French. Hilarious name, by the way. And they will have Iki. Iki is the game that I have rated as the best board game from Japan. And if you go to Japan, you go to the Emperor's Palace, I think you'll you'll agree with me. I, you should, anyway. But you don't have to. It's okay. Now, Iki came out in 2015. That's like nine years ago. But and you can see here, here is the original uh, cover of the game. It originally has this nice uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! E-type art style. But then, sorry we are French, uh, read to the artwork. And look, made it have a more modern look uh, for today's market. Now, if you look into the forums, you'll see, uh, I believe this person did the 2015 versus 2021, all the changes here. And they go in painstakingly detail. Amazing job. Um, sometime after that, I did a play on one day of the new and the old. And I, I give you my thoughts here. Now, Iki is a fantastic Ron Dell game. We are walking around in a circle. And as you can see here, you start here and you move around and around and around. Every time you walk past one of your opponent's uh, booths, your, they will increase in experience. And then once they go past level three, then they will retire and then you'll earn even more points and in income. This is a fantastic game with multiple strategies that you could try, and each time it's just it's just a very very different game. Now they've even I think sorry we are French even did an expansion. And you can see here, Akebono, where they added this little part here, so a nice little bridge where you can I guess hire some personalities. I've never played this expansion. Um, cause I never, I don't own the new version. I have my old 2015 version, but if you are looking for a really fantastic game that plays very differently in a nice heavier style Euro, and what is the weight on this one? Three, then I would strongly recommend you check out Iki cause I love it. Now, moving on past that booth, you're going to run right past Amigo and go straight to 6D 101. And that is Aura Game, one of the best, uh, little publishers out of Singapore and the stuff they're doing is pretty fascinating now if you go here you can see uh, here it is or game and this is their BGG page they also run ABGF every year that's the Asian board game festival this is the 2023 uh, group photo you can see the founders here this is Daryl and then down here this is Nick now they run, host this every year and they don't have just publishers from Singapore. They have publishers from Taiwan, Japan, uh, Korea, Indonesia, Thailand, Taiwan. Just like publishers from all over Southeast Asia and all going to this festival. So if you have a chance to go to this festival, definitely check it out. I never got. I really want to go. I wanted to go a few times, but my, my passport just was like expired and I had to renew it. Oh, it didn't expire. It would have expired because you have to have like six months or something like that when you land. Anyway, uh, let's look at their games that they'll be having. Uh, now, I'll have what's called Chocolate Block. Now, if you notice this uh, photo here, this is like a cube. And some of their games, now if you can go to images here, uh, they have this new line of games that all come in like little handheld cubes. And it's quite cool. You can see this block version up. This is the bottom, I believe, and this is the top. And you just pop open the cube, and then you have all these little components. 
Uh, this, I believe, is like this tile laying game. If you can see here, yeah, matching pattern tile placement. Build lively apartment blocks and chain up cats, birds, and underwear uh, for points. I think that's really funny. And uh, you probably won't get this, but like in um, in Asia, a lot of people live in uh, like apartments, kind of like this. When you look out your window, you can see all these balconies. And a lot of people, for some reason, just, you know, back in the day, I guess they didn't have dryers or access to dryers. And uh, they would just hang their clothes out on their balcony. Just let it air dry because it's much cheaper than... You know, obviously running a dryer. And <clears throat> it would unfortunately mean that you're hanging your underwear there. And I guess some people feel a little bit uncomfortable with that. I could, I totally get that if it's not your culture. But after living in Asia for like, you know, 20 years, it's it's quite common. It's no big deal. And most of the time, you're not looking at like some Victoria's Secret Angel's underwear. It's just like some grandma, you know. So I guess you see all this underwear here. I think this looks really cute. I definitely want to pick up this game because this looks really fun. And look, there's an otter. Therefore, it automatically wins. Cutest game. Um, that looks a really cute game. I think it's a nice, fun, approachable game. Let's see here. I'm assuming that the weight is rather light. Ages for 10 and up. 25 to 30 minutes. And then now they'll also have uh, Cube Melt, which is also in their Cube Line game. Like you see this nice little cube. Pop it open. I guess they have dice, components. Some trays here. It seems like it'll be a game for one to five players. Boom, look at that, one to five players. Uh, dice, humor, party game. So life is short. Uh, roll ice cubes to achieve your life goals before you melt into a puddle. Oh, I guess you are a cube. Uh, life is short, even shorter if you're an ice cube. You are an ice cube. Uh, players play as cube melt, the irresistible ice cube that thirsts for love and adventure. Can you use your life goals before you melt into a puddle? Oh, man, that's... That got kind of dark. The images here look really cute. And ah, look at that. That looks really adorable. And it looks like, oh yeah, this must be adventure. This must be love. Must be a nice role game. So that looks pretty interesting. But I think you're probably thinking, Jay, I want some heavy games. Well, I think Overparts is their heavy game. Now, this is only... Um, Two images here, but skillfully park incoming vehicles to unlock objectives and combos. This looks like one of those old mobile, the old school like mobile games where you're trying to fit all these cars and get them all to leave. I believe this is also on Kickstarter. Uh, here you can see their uh, <clears throat> their Instagram with all their games. They also did Buffet Boss. This is one of my favorite games from them. Uh, but here is the Kickstarter page for Overparked. And here you go. You can see that everyone gets a player board. You get all these tokens. And then, yeah, you're putting these cards in here. I like this little rotating steering wheel because for, I guess, a draft. And then you place, you draft these cards and you place those tiles in any configuration that you can. And it seems like if you can't park them, they go here to this overparked, uh, which is very similar to Come Sail Away, which makes sense because Daryl Chow also like co-designed Come Sail Away. So some of your favorite Sashi and Sashi games, like Come Sail Away. Hey, Daryl Chow co-designed that. Or Remember Our Trip. Uh, Daryl Chow also co-designed that. Him and Sashi are like tight blood brothers. And they get along pretty well. So this game looks really cool. And I guess here is what it looks like being played. Now I got George. What's up, George? George is also another publisher and designer in Singapore. And it looks like this is... Quite a big game. I'm really excited about this. Yes, there's me. I made a quote about Aura Game because I think all their games are worth checking out every single year. And here you go. So it looks like this. they did this to help do a fulfillment for international shipping. But if you just want to pick up the game at Spiel, it looks like you can. And there are only two booths in Hall 6. So this is going to be a short little video here. But check in tomorrow when I go into Hall 5. And there's going to be, that's going to be a much longer video because there are a ton of publishers in Hall 5. Once again, my name is Jay. I play board games from Asia and share what I find with all of you. I'm going to put a link up to a video somewhere that I think you'll enjoy. I'll see you tomorrow.